thinking about going, but we're not going to go. from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Our guest is a triple threat banger. We will cover all the bases with him. Gear Expo Nashville is absolutely rocking. Details on how you can be part of a super VIP after party. AES wrap up, Blackbird Sessions preview. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. AES wrap up. Man, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just start there? Or should Let's I go through the other stuff first? No, no, no do you think? Do, okay, cool. Well, we'll get to AES wrap up. Yeah, I All can't right, cool. wait. Uh, I, got, I got some wraps. Uh, wraps and some ups. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, there weren't very many downs. No, I had a blast. Yeah, it was absolutely. my favorite AES since 41, 42. Since the pig ate your brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since the pigs ate my little brother. Exactly. Uh, hey there, audio family. Hope your week was amazing. Equally amazing are the good folks from the Blackbird Academy, Vintage King, DTS, Fab Factory, Avid, Recording Connection, and Studio 202. Gear Expo Nashville is hot, hot, hot. It's, yeah. it's coming right up. Joining us for the producers panel is DJ Swivel. He's going to talk about his work Swivel. with Chain Smokers and Beyonce. Brendan Benson is there. He was in the Rack and Tours with Jack White and is just an indie alternative rock badass. Josh Goodwin is going to join us. He's Josh. going to talk about all his work and the huge Justin Bieber turnaround and all the smashes he did. And rock icon Chris Lord Algae coming down to join there us is. as well. You don't want to miss that panel. That panel is going to be in the middle of the day. A writer's panel in the morning, somewhere around 10.30 or so, includes Mark Beeson, Phil O'Donnell, Jason Duke. These writers have hits from Blake Shelton to Keith Urban, Kelly Pickler, Greg Craig Morton, Kelsia Ballerini, and we're going to add some rockers to that as well. And then in the afternoon, 2-ish, 2.30-ish, our Gigs You Didn't Know Exist panel will include movie folks from Pitch Perfect, people who use audio to solve crime, audio in sports, in radio, a website that will help you find a job in audio. This panel will be great for your career. Don't miss it. It'll give you some ideas. These are great options. You can't find them anyplace else. Two other special things are going to be happening. One is the We Stand for David Jam. Yeah. If you remember back in the day, and you can see it on the screen behind me, our good friend David Plataleros, um, we raised some money for him. He's the guy who had the spine injury. He's, he's a little over five months. So he's going to perform on guitar with some pro guys from Kenny Chesney World. Um, he's just an amazing fellow. You're going to be inspired yeah. by him all day long. So that's one of the things that's going to be really special. The second thing, if you're a student, you're going to get an all access super VIP invite to the after party with Dave and I at the Trace Horse Studio and Ranch. All you have to do is show up at Gear Expo, find Chongor or Stephanie Spitfire Willis, mention your school, and they will hand you a very secret wristband. And that super special VIP wristband gets you in. Boom. You're good. So obviously the first thing you have to do is sign up for Gear Expo really fast. See the, you see the URL below me? Get there, thegearexpo.com. Sign up, show up early, claim your wristband. So that's not for everybody. Only a couple hundred people are going to go with us. It's going to be very cool. You get to hang out with some of those panels we just talked about. You get to all of a sudden advance your career and learn from the great. So Hurry up and do it. Reserve your space. We'll be watching. Now, after Gear Expo, for those who are so inclined, then Dave teaches at the Blackbird Studios for a week. Um, I understand CLA may drop through there as well, too. I hope so. Yeah, he mentioned it at our, at our Westlake Pro yeah. thing. I don't want to say too much, but, it, but if he does, IF, uh, it, it's going to be fun. That boy is just an, a complete, he is just a monster. I know. you got to love him. So, um... So Chris Lord Algie is going to be there. I'm going to speak to the class incoming before, I think, on Monday morning. 
Uh, David Planleros apparently has signed up to take the course. Still just a few seats open. Hit karma at the blackbirdacademy.com for info. That's going to be an amazing, amazing week. Now let's meet the bearded buff biscuit eating bloviator. He goes by the name of <laughs> John Gold. Tiffany player was sleeping a little bit on that. I know he's late, bad. He? Yeah, it's Tommy. He only got the last hit. There's is no there, roll. Is there a brother on the thing or, or not? <laughs> we gotta figure out his beats. That'd be funny. <laughs> a, uh, an orchestra with a drumline timpani band. Okay. I'd pay to see that. Okay, good. We'll, we'll arrange that for <laughs> it you. It wasn't funny. It's just. It was just a fact. <laughs> I have no no reply. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go to Chongor. <laughs> hey Chongor, how are you? How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. We're all good. A um, couple things coming up that are that are really cool. Um, the the whole gear expo thing. A bunch of gear we're giving away as well yep. too. Correct. Yep. What from where? What kind of stuff? Um, a lot of prizes from Avid Pro Tools Dock, Focusrite's Claret Four Pre, giving away Ableton Live Nine Suite, Apogee Ooh. Mic the Ninety Six K version, mm -hmm. Prime Acoustics Recoil Stabilizer for your speakers, really good mounts, and the Radio Gold Digger. And what does she do? She's a gold digger. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, gold. And it doesn't have to be a she. It could be a he. We have equal opportunity gold diggers. It's fine like that. But anyway, so a bunch of gear is coming. I talked to Isotope at, at AES. They've got a bunch of stuff is coming. Their new product out is called Neutron. Yeah. So there's going to be more it's and more good. stuff to it's give good. away. Yep. Uh, it's good? Yeah, it's good. Cool. And then also, I think Audionamics is going to have some stuff down there oh, as well, too. We love them. We love them. Um, and also, they bought us liquor. They, they got did. us liquored up, and they got the, they got the crowd liquored up too. Yeah. And then also, what are we doing? We're doing some giveaways for an after party or something. How does that work? Yeah. So if you're at Gear Expo in Nashville, come to me, find me, tell me what school you're with, and we'll give you a special wristband to get you into the Trace Horse after party for the Gear Expo in Nashville. It's going to be a good time. So if a guy comes up to you that's like or lady comes up to you and they're like 55 years old, and they go, I went to the farm college of of Hard Tuscaloosa knock. in 1936, do they get a wristband? I have to come to you about it. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. yes. Of course you do. Any student who went, anybody who went to school, they can. The school of Hard Knocks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, so that's a cool thing. We, we want to. Is there a limit for that? Well, they told me there was a limit. And I decided to disagree with that limit. <laughs> so normal. So <laughs> we will set the limit. Well, and that, and Dave makes a good point. We want a lot of you to come to this. Yeah. I think that um, besides whatever we try to teach you and, and whatever we try to give to you, you can't get anything like the experience of talking to one of our panelists, one of our guests, one on one, so you can learn. So the more people come to this, the you know, I was just thinking we, as I was hearing you talk. Um, one of the things that I'm so proud of our audience is when when we uh, give them the opportunity to meet someone that, that they admire. They, they are very respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, they uh, better than any audience out there. They don't hit them with a bunch of tapes and that kind of stuff. Can I work for you and all that? I mean, it's okay to do that, but but do it respectfully. And, right. And so, I'm, I'm expecting the same thing for this party. It's it's uh, our audience is wonderful. We just had a long weekend at AES. Mm -hmm. Good for you. What was good? Man, about I had it? a blast. Yeah. Got to see some manufacturers. Got to see old buddies. Mm -hmm. A highlight for me was listening to Dave Malikport talk about um, uh, how he tunes rooms and things like that. Mm -hmm. Audionamics was just that a blast, as you know. Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, their products are so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who else? You, you know what was my fun one? Which one? It was the Westlake Pro booth. Oh, Westlake Pro booth. Yeah. That was, oh, I mean, so we, Lord we, Algae came. well, we do Westlake Pro. Um, we look out in the audience. Chris Lord Algae's there. He comes up. And then he says, my brother Tom's coming, who I hadn't met. You'd met before. Tom mm -hmm. comes up. And then Neil Pogue of Outcast fame, he comes <laughs> up. And then in the back hiding is Josh Goodwin <laughs> from Justin Bieber because he knows we're going to bring him up. Yeah. Then DJ Swivel is, is floating around. Mm -hmm. um, and again, one of the things that you mentioned about the audience is we got really great questions. Mm -hmm. So wherever we were during AES, in my view, and thank you for all the attention we got, um, we met really cool people. Yeah. You do, to your point, you get a chance to talk to them. Yeah. There's this interactive thing. The parties afterwards were really good. We went to a number oh, yeah, of different yeah, things that yeah. were really cool. Um, we'd advise you next opportunity to go to AES do. Yeah. NAM is Dave's right about NAM. NAM is bigger and more monstrous, and there's a value in that. But the opportunity to sit down and talk to people, it's just really hard to be. It was a good time. Yeah, real quick. Um one of my favorite things was I was strolling by the Waves booth and I saw Greg Wells talking. Yes, sir. So, you know, as as friends often, friends often do, I, I felt 
the obligation to heckle, to heckle a little bit. Of course. I mean, <laughs> and that was good. a blast. And then, uh, and then my friend Ancy at the uh, Amphion booth, mm -hmm. who's, who, whose new speakers I love, uh, hung out there and learned a lot about uh, how speakers work. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew it all. We learned a lot of stuff. Chong or it was a blast. Chong or got electric stem that pro athletes get. <laughs> they literally had a booth with electric stem devices because <laughs> because producers and song. Because I asked him why he was there, and he said. So much stress is carried in the neck of producers and songwriters because they're always like this or at a board. And man, I'm telling you, we put, I bought two of them. Uh, you know, I sold them. What do they do? You literally can turn up the intensity. So oh, it's an electric. And it, it, electric and it sends stuff through your, so I tried on my knee and like for an hour later it felt better. So wow. there was all kinds of experiences there, <laughs> except the one issue that I would have, and then we'll get on with the show, is I took somebody from Audionamics and Chongor to lunch in a little lunch place. And I think we got three hamburgers. And it was sixty four dollars and thirty six cents. Yeah, they weren't even. <laughs> they were too expensive were beyond they, the other stuff. Were they ninety six k or forty four one? One was forty four one, okay. and then the other two were ninety six k. Okay. And I think that's why I paid more. Yeah, that's yeah. always. More. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so ultimately, those kind of conventions are good for you, good for us. We get to share. We get to meet a lot of you. But your education curve is going to go way up. You're going to learn a lot about mm -hmm. gear. Um, it is the one convention that people have time mm -hmm. with you. It's not mm -hmm. so much of the, and again, mm -hmm. there's real process in NAM that makes sense, but mm -hmm. this is one that's a little slower and tighter. So, good time. Mm -hmm. Go to thegearexpo.com, sign up. Go to the Blackbird Academy, Carmen at the Blackbird Academy .com. Please. Sign up for sessions. Come get your free stuff. A lot of good things going on in the next couple of weeks. From Blue October to Third Eye Blind, Jason Bourne to Fox NFL Sunday, there is an absolute ton to learn from this guy. Yeah. Call him a triple threat banger in the intro, and that's exactly right. We are pleased to welcome to the desk the one, the only, Mark Needham. Mark. What's Thank happening, you guys man? for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Far away there, sir. Mark, uh, your, your path from zero to 150 is just fascinating. Can you take me on a quick journey of how you got your start in the uh, audio world? I I've came down with my guitar teacher to San Francisco and uh, helped him start a kind of a rock music school oh, there. Right. Uh, about 16 and a half, I guess. <laughs> uh, from where? From Humboldt County. I oh, grew, cool. up out, grew up out in the woods there, that's a little tiny it. town. That's, that uh, county's famous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it, we were more for fish at the time. At but, that time. <laughs> um, and I, I, you know, I got a little two-track Sony tape recorder and a, and a couple mics and a four-input mixer and had a little studio along with the school. And I ended up just spending more time doing that than, than playing guitar. Did you know early when you started to mess with it that you had an affinity for it? Did yeah, it I, mean, I, I always so. had that as a kid. You know, I mean, I, I, I would, you know, I played guitar and drums, but I also, you know, I'd tear my tape recorders apart and see if I could just how many of my amps I could plug together yeah, and too. stack, you know, and yeah, weird, too. weird visions, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. And and when when did you know that you you had the bug for engineering and producing? And I mean, I I would say by the time I was you know seventeen, eighteen, mm -hmm. I was pretty much what I was doing full time. Did you know it was called that, or are you still just following stuff that you like to do? I just, you know, I, I, I mean, I just, I started getting more gear and building more studios, yeah. and that's, you know, I just, I like doing it. I didn't really plan on being like a producer or a mixer, and there weren't really separate mixers at that point. You right, know? right. But, uh, it, you know, it's what I, 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 I love doing it. I, you know, I was you look up one day and you're doing 16 it. 16 hours a day. It's like, I guess this is what I'm <laughs> yeah, doing exactly, now. You know? exactly. how, did, um, how did your engineering skills transform into your production skills and songwriting and all that? In other words, to, tailor, to narrow the question a little bit, your philosophy was any place, any time, anywhere for any amount of money, and, and you're, you, would, you would slide into a lot of the opportunities by just recording the band and then making yourself your skill known to them. And of course, they fell in love with that. Right. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, just answered the question for me. You did, I right? I did. Pretty, Pretty much. much. Pretty much. <laughs> oh man, I went to the Barbara Walters Academy, and I just it, it happens. Yeah. I mean, just. Being in the studio 16 hours, 20 hours a day for, you know, seven days a week for the first 15 years of my life right. uh, doing this, uh, you know, you're just, uh, the arrangements and songwriting and production stuff just 
comes from watching watching it happen a lot of times. That guy had a really good idea there. That right. worked. Mm -hmm. You know, right. that yeah. really sucked. I won't do it that way. Uh -huh. During the early years, was there a range of music you worked on? Was there one kind of specific type? Not. I was. You know, I've always been a fan of a lot of different styles. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up on. Uh, a lot of Motown and, and country music mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. some early rock. So mm -hmm. I was I was kind of all over the map, and uh, you know I've I've worked you know from Taj Mahal to to like uh, you know a lot of stuff just all over the place. Yep. I mean I've I've done weird sound design mm -hmm, stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean I love anything that's good music. Yep. Just, On your way up. When did you start making a living doing it? And you went, ah, wait a minute, I can pay for my car note, or I mean, I get some food, or? I, I, I mean, I always made, made a living doing it, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, it was, it was a very poor way. Sure, you yeah. know? a meager living. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was, you know, I mean, the, 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 uh, the cupboards were pretty bare for yeah. many years. Oh, but, yeah, for all of us. Um, but I, my first like, big, uh, like major label record was with Taj ah. back on when he was on Warner's and yeah. that was you know it's like I could start to see oh you know well, maybe this could work you know, Taj Mahal, I should make a living Taj yeah. Mahal is one of my favorites in case you guys aren't familiar with Taj Mahal he's uh, I used to call him a roots blues musician gifted beyond belief when you worked with him did you have the band with the three tubas playing bass this was right after the three tubas right after the three tubas oh, I wish I could have seen that live I, I, I did see the three tubas live how do you like a tuba I usually just, you know, just kind of, any horns like that, I'm usually back up a, just slightly to the other side of the bell, so you're getting some combination between yeah. the sound leaving the reeds and, you know, not too yeah. heavy on the bell, but, yeah. hey, you know, that's just me. If, you, if you've seen the roots, uh, you can imagine three of those, you know, playing mm. bass lines. It was really kind of oompa, like almost New Orleans, Dixieland in a way. It was that, that Real was, cool yeah, stuff. but I, I, I mean, I saw that being play, and, uh, they played actually a party over at his house with the whole band. Oh, really? But uh, the the two albums that I did were put more. He had the two the, the two steel drummers, um, two or three percussionists. Had the bass uh, bass player from Marley's band. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun, you know. Mm -hmm. He's just such a he's such a talented guy and such mm -hmm. a just a great musician, a great mm -hmm. guy to work with. What it from your perspective when you approach a record? Because I think most guys like yourself and Dave uh, end up having signatures. Sometimes a signature can be a sound signature, sometimes it can be a philosophy. What's your philosophy when you go, when somebody brings you a record, are you doing no harm? Are you changing it? Are you, uh, I mean, what is the perspective? Is it different per, per ho record? Hopefully doing no harm. I mean, I try to listen, you know, I mean, I try to listen to the song and get a feel of, for the lyrics and but emotionally that they're trying to convey mm -hmm. and, uh, and and hopefully hopefully help convey that when in the in the way that I put the sound together. Mm -hmm. If it you know, if it's aggressive, it's if it's like a Chris Isaac thing where it's mm -hmm. swimming guitars, but you know, mm -hmm. I, well, I mean I'd hopefully I'm trying to reinforce what the song is trying to Cause, say. Cause I to me that is what as I've as we've I've re as we've done our research I like the fact that your homage to the song is really important. Like you gotta hear it, understand it, see where they're trying to go with it. Some people get over-indexed on just production and all that kind of stuff, but I think if the song isn't treated carefully, you can't grow the music, right? Don't you have to protect the song? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I love all the little tricks and stuff you can do, but I, I, again, I'm, I move pretty fast and I'm hopefully trying to you trying to embarrass me or something? Yeah. I guess I'm fast, man. <laughs> I, mean, I told you, I bared my soul yeah. in my heart. You know, and Your I just, you know, I wanted to just right stab you in the heart right now. Right out, like, tries to embarrass me. <laughs> well, he's aggressive. He's, I got the know, Polaroids, too. From dude. Humboldt County, they're aggressive up there. Uh, but, you know, I just... He's I, real I mean, fast, uh, Herb. Hopefully, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, whatever this song is trying to say, I'm hoping I'm trying to... I'm, trying to express that in one of the sounds. Yep. Yep. This would be a good time to kind of jump into your methods and your techniques. Uh, when you start a song, and take me from that, that, that moment when you hear the rough mix, and then you know, you're sitting down and you're starting to work on it. How, explain your process. I mean, I, I listen to the, to the reference mix. I'll listen to that through, and hopefully by the, 
end of end of that, I have a pretty good vision where I want to go, and I just I just start with the drums. I just work my way down. I have everything laid out in a particular order every time, mm -hmm. and I just work my way through the song. I'm working really pretty quickly through that. But uh, uh, like including breaks and everything. And remind me to ask you about how you use breaks, but. Like four hours, five hours, six hours. I know it depends on the song. It depends but, on the song. I mean, but let's say it, average is maybe two and a half, three hours. You know, maybe to go through a song and have it. I, you know what? I, and I, I mean, my philosophy is if I really go through the song and break tracks up right and and you know really get the thing laid out right with good sounds and really breaking the tracks up. Hopefully, the only automation I do is like maybe a chorus right and mm. and and. Put a fade, a fade in the beginning on the ending. It, you know, it's mm -hmm. uh, the the better the better I can lay it out, the less I should have to do. Right. And, right. and we're, we're we're gonna get to the breaks, but you like to work on multiple songs at the same time. How many songs would you normally be working on in a day? There's a number out there floating around twenty. I've d I've d I've done that. I mean, I, I, I usually I'm like I might be Jesus. jumping around <laughs> eight to ten. I mean, I worked on. Six song before I got here today. Before he got here today, he was here by noon. Okay, I'm going to talk to his. Is your wife your manager? <laughs> no, I actually have another. Manager. Okay, because because your economic model should be absolutely unique. You need to get paid a volume rate. He's messing it up for the rest of us. Oh yeah, no question. I get up really early though. <laughs> I, was up I love that. Today, that doesn't yeah. make me, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make you feel better. Does okay, it? let's change the subject. Uh, <laughs> Wow. When I first moved to L.A., one of my dear friends was Dave Way, and he taught me how to take breaks, which sounds kind of silly, but explain the importance of breaks. It's, 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 a, it's a germane part of the process, isn't it? I mean, it, it is for me. I mean, I know some people who just work straight through. And, and, you know, but for me, I just, like, I have to stop. I mean, I'll get to a certain point in the tune. I mean, I'll run... I'll run down through all, all, you know, run all the tracks in the song, kind of get my basic layout. Um, and then I usually turn everything off and just go through it, go through it again one more time. But if I can s just stop for five minutes, walk yeah. outside, or lay on the couch and read my book, that's what I love about Kindles now. I, mm -hmm. I finally got a Kindle. You what, know? what was the last mm -hmm. book you read? Uh, which book am I reading? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I haven't actually. I'm reading three different books right now. Of course. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Why, why would you ever it's, be doing one thing at a time? <laughs> but if I could just stop and read for a second or walk outside or take the dog out in the park for a minute, just, sure. I, I just feel like you come back. I, I just get that. You, you get locked into what you've been hearing. And if I can get away for five or ten minutes, I come back. I feel like I come back with a fresh take on the song. Mm. Do you ever get giddy when you get a new piece of gear, and how does it help your pr creative process? I mean, absolutely. I, you know, I, it's, and it's you know, I mean, I, I I see the email from UAD coming in, and I, you know, I, it's like, oh, that's so pathetic. Oh, that's, that's not the ad one. That's the <laughs> that, that's, that's the, the good new stuff, plug in one. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's just so much fun to get the to get yeah. pull that stuff out and yeah. and you know it's. To throw it. I mean, I'm always working on a song. I can just well, let's just throw it well, in yeah, here. No so build, build, See what build happens. Build the stuff around it. Yeah. If, if I was to ask you the same question, what would you say in in your world? What? When you got a new fill in the blank, it makes you giddy. Uh, new check <laughs> <laughs> makes me giddy. <laughs> that we can pay some bills. I'm gonna get the man. next I check. I love this man. <laughs> yeah. Um. um are you in the mood to talk about uh, Imagine Dragons? I got a couple sure. Of questions. Sure. Okay. Um, on um, I forgot the name of the song. In time is that the name of the song? It's Did time. I, it's time. Yeah. How did that come about? I love the mix. I've got some questions for you on the mix. You know what? Let's save that for a second. Um, I'm fascinated by Herb called you a triple threat: <clears throat> the movie thing, the TV thing, mm -hmm. and, and the music thing. Um, I know there's a question there somewhere, and I'm sure that Herb has thought about it, so take it, Herb. So, the question I would pose is, where did that come from? Is that an interest level that just, because clearly you can handle a lot, you have a lot of capacity. They're kind and of is that, different. Be, yeah, because there's different sort of 
there's different parts of that cues and other kinds of things. I mean, did that just come? The in, movie and TV thing is any time that that's come about, it's usually just all been through. Uh, somebody knew somebody. Through the thing. music stuff. I mean, ah. like, like uh, Chris Isaac and I started working with David Lynch mm -hmm. on some things. So he used some of our songs, and yeah. then. You know, all of a sudden, well, let's work on this movie, Blue Velvet, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, same with different TV shows. So it's not, I mean, I'd love to be actually make some movies. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of fun, just the you whole thing. You from can't that. do that in three hours. Uh, yeah, I know, that's, well, the, that's, that's the <laughs> rough might part. Be yeah. to. He, might be um, to. he might be able to. But, you know, yeah, you, you, you all that's usually spun out of different, you different know, I'm working on some songs with this artist and all of a sudden, oh, well, there's this other opportunity. I see, I see. That's pretty cool. Um, on, on its time, um, there were like, what, a couple hundred tracks on that? Probably yeah, 180, 200, Ooh. something. Um, how did you, how, when you started on that, by the way, the mix is spectacular. Oh, thanks. And, um, um, on, on all the Imagine Dragon stuff you did, how did you start? How did you organize the track so that you could get the guitars to be happy with all the synthesizers? Because they don't normally reside in the same genre, you know. I mean, again for me, I just you know I I listen to I know what the vocal sounds like and I know what the main theme to me is. Mm -hmm. You know, is that mandolin? So it's that and then all the percussive stops and mm -hmm. I just you know I just it just start, comes naturally. I just start going yeah. through and hopefully it all falls together and sounds mm -hmm. good. I mean that one's a combination of the mandolin and some synth and like a electronic sitar sound Ooh. all playing that mandolin part and just getting a balance on those. It, the drums were a combination of live drums and and program drums. I'm guessing I don't know for yeah. sure, but I'm guessing yeah. there's like 80, 90 tracks of drums. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> so when you when you when you approach something like that, do you try to narrow it down into groups and mix like groups of of program drums and groups of live drums, or you just approach it? Yeah, you know, it depends on the song and the layout. On, on, on that on one, that I, on that one, I was doing like a, yeah. I mean, I had like my live set, the, the live drum set, then. Um, the electronic set sets. I mean, to me, the main thing is to really go through and mm -hmm. and, and figure out the, the the placement and phase, and you know, on all the low end stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to let some things, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, hit, hit together? Are you going to let, let a little bit of slap? And just making sure that there's no phasing between oh, oh, so seven or eight lose different. Something physically to, to help. Yeah, I mean, phase. you got seven or eight different kick drums plus the stomps and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. just really keeping, you know, it's keeping the phase together and all that low end to make it all work mm -hmm. together. And you know, maybe you have to cut out a few kicks and maybe line some of them up. There's a lot of it's some physically uh -huh. moving some stuff around to really get the bottom in tight. You know, be able to get it that big and tight. And when and when. When you're doing that, are you monitoring loud or soft? I mean, when you're working on bass, what's your monitoring level? I mix really soft now. I mean, I I used to like <laughs> I, I used to yeah, seventies and eighties. It's right. harder to 80s. mix bass loud, isn't it? It's hard. I mix I mix really soft now. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I'll kick it up, but you know I, I keep it really soft. Hmm. One more question on on that song. Um, the vocal has almost a, an old school anthematic uh, kiss style energy to it. Uh, wh how did you get the vocal to have that, the ambient space you put it in for one thing, but how did you get it to just sound like, <clears throat> you know? You know, usually, I, usually I'm cutting, I usually take the lead vocal and I'm cutting it into verse, pre chorus, choruses, and I have different effects mm -hmm. and slightly different sounds. On, on that song, I mean, to me, see, I'd, you know, I'd seen Dan live before we started working on him. Just, mm -hmm. he had the one thing I, that I always look for in an artist if I'm going to get involved in a, any kind of development deal. Or, um, I really look for in an artist is believability. Mm -hmm. And Dan mm -hmm. just, you know, he's like one of these guys. He's singing, he's pulling at his T-shirt. Right. You know, it's like it's this guy really, this guy loves. He believes what he's singing. So, yeah. I mean, for that, I, I everything's on one track. Uh, the reverbs, you know, I just tried to get an aggressive, 
pretty aggressive vocals. You can really hear just all that throat stuff. Mm -hmm. He's a great singer. It makes it easy too. He's got that in his throat. But um, did you did you use a lot of delays or like Echo Farm? Uh, Echo Farm was was Echo gone by Boy, then. Yeah, Echo Farm's gone. Yeah, I mean I'm using. I'm using Echo Boy oh, and I'm using an toys. Altiverb, uh, the cello chamber. Mm. Um, not a lot of fancy stuff going on with the Echo, and I'm not doing a lot of changes in Echo between sessions on that song, which is that's usually I would have the vocal cut up into a lot of different pieces for oh. each different section, but not on that tune. Oh, no, I was going to say, he brought up something earlier that because you have spent some time developing groups. And so your A&R eye and ear and chops, is that also part of your makeup? Because when you see something that turns you on, you want to help get it to the next level. Well, I mean, we, we try to get in on things early. Just, mm -hmm. um, you know, it gives, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a way to expand the horizons or how people view what I do. And yeah. they think, oh, he's just this guy. If I can come up with a band that's just a slightly different spin or take on mm -hmm. things and help walk, help walk them through the process in what either it's just as a mixer investing my time or sometimes as a develop, to help thing develop, right. produce. Right. But it just allows me to, I can be this guy because I, you know, I mean, right. I'm not waiting for the labels and I'm create, helping me create mm -hmm. my own thing that I want. Oh, on, on that song, um, what did you use on the stereo bus? I'm real curious. The stereo bus, I use, I use a bunch of stuff on the stereo bus. That narrows it down. I use, I'm using probably two, two or three different compressors. Really? Two different EQs and I use that, uh, UAD stereo expander on that. Um, I'm usually using like the Shadow Hills, an SSL, uh, a Manly, a Manly V is a, a, uh -huh. a, a Mu is a limit, a soft limiter. Let me guess, please. Shadow Hills into the SSL into the Manly. Correct, and, ah. and they're all they're all very soft and doing different things. And then I'm using a, a I'm using maybe. Either their precision EQ at that time, or I'm using uh -huh. a new bed. That precision curve. stuff's underrated, right? It's pretty good. Every I, time you put it on, it works. But I'm using that curve bender a lot now too. So oh, well, like channel, I said, I get a new channel. toy. I get, no, I get a new I toy. It's all over. Um, are you still using two Ravens from Steven Slate? I am. They just brought, they just built a new one for me. It's you know, it's, it, uh -huh. it's got some, it's got a whole wood casing, so it matches my ceiling oh, and stuff. Nice. It's got my, it's got my little logo on it. I very love it. Cool. It sounds better with the logo on of it. Course oh, it. Of course, yeah. everything does. So, <laughs> so, are you say? Is it safe to say that that you're you're fully committed to in the box now? You're you're comfortable with the, your creative. You know, flow, I, I started. I sold the SSL in two thousand four, five, I guess. Oh, and, that early. And I was going. Then I was sort of half in the box with my outboard mm -hmm. gear still mm -hmm. in chains, but mm -hmm. I went fully in the box as far as outboard gear probably four or five years ago. I still had a summing mixer and I got rid of the summing mixer with the laboratories that we were, we were mm -hmm. talked about. I got rid yeah. of that maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah. And just I'm still using outboard gear. Talk me out of it. Talk you out of using outboard gear? Just. For me, I got I, I didn't like the fact when I was using outboard gear with, with you know with, with the stuff in the box, I was starting to use stuff just in chains where I locked everything down like some other friends of mine do. Let's just, you know, just lock everything on. You put a piece of tape in your, but <laughs> but, but, but to me, yeah, I, I, you know, I started. I, 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 well, I, no, I accused him of super gluing his knobs, but we won't go into that. But you know, I started looking at it. And it's like you know, I, I, that, that's. It just tied me into one thing, and I started feeling really yep. bad about it because, because yep. you know, when I was mixing on a console, I'd be turning this stuff red, right. and, and you know, I had these, it's, it's, uh, I just felt bad about it. I finally just got rid of all the gear, and I, I, you know, I think the, I think the stuff is, is good enough at this point that I don't have any problem mixing all in the box or all on a console and still coming out with something that sounds the same. At the ballroom, um, which is a beautiful facility, I've never been there. Never been invited to her. Mm. Uh, 
but I saw some pictures. Okay. And it's spectacular. Can you give us a, like a little imaginary tour? Your monitors, the, your, tr your, your bass trapping, how you treated the room, what you're looking for for creativity out of the space. I, I just like a space that's really comfortable for me to work mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a, we'd been renting an old, uh, an old villa that was you know, like an Italian villa and, and down in Griffith Park, mm -hmm. it was built in the 20s, and the the shape of those rooms. I've been I've done that since probably the 90s. I would rather than just be in the studio, I mm -hmm. would just go around until I found a house that had a room in it that I really liked. Mm -hmm. and I'd draw, have all my gear on cables. I'd just drop it in and work there. Mm -hmm. um, but I found this this place, and I loved the sound of the rooms. Rooms. Just, Oh, we, had a, we had a couple of rooms there. Wow. Um, it's three stories, right? That, that was three stories. We just moved in July. I moved up to a block up the street, and we I kind of duplicated those rooms on my property up the street. Oh, cool. And, cool. you know, it's just, it's, it's big beam, you know, 11-foot ceilings, uh, cherry wood ceilings with big oh, wow. beams and, like, Kind of octagonal recess oh, thing, God. but it looks, they, they work kind of like diffusers. And I have lots of, I have French doors and you know all okay, glass. You're bragging now. <laughs> I just like the light. I like having lights instead of being in a dark room. <laughs> I love room, the you know? view, that, like expansive. Yeah, the views. Uh, what are you monitoring with the uh, ATCs? ATC forty fives and 45s? The, yeah, the forty fives oh, and the and the sub. I don't oh. use the twenty fives oh, anymore. Okay. What sub are you using? ATC, the big oh, one. Okay. Uh, are any near fields? Those are mids. No near fields anymore. I just use those. Mm. Wow. There you go. Chelsea, you got some stuff? You got a couple questions for our guests? We do. This first one's from Eric Knoll. How do you get the vocal sound on Hey Soul Sister? Oh, wow. Uh, Very carefully. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I know you had an 1176 on it. That effect is I right. had 11. You know, I mean, <laughs> all my vocals are usually a comb. It's you know, it's a combination of. Uh, I'll have two different de-essers. You know, depending on the vocals, I'll set those at, at different one wide and one narrow. Right. I'll have a 1176 uh, silver face. I use an SSL for EQ and. I'll, usually have a, an LA-2A just hitting the peaks really soft and then I'll have a decapitator on there and use Ooh. zero to up to about three depending on mm -hmm. how aggressive I want the song to get so almost almost all of them are some combination of those I'll sometimes I'll throw a Poltec on uh, just to get a, you know, a little proximity effect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a, usually a combination of uh, of those things, pretty much on every vocal. I mean, if I if if, if I can't make it sound good with those, then, then there's something wrong with me, you know. Uh, gonna... uh, so, so you got another one? Yeah, second one from Allison Mavins. How do you get a full low end while while maintaining punch without getting a boomy sound? How do I? Man, that's that's a course. What was the question? How do, how do you get a full low end while maintaining punch but not get boomy? You. Know, <laughs> Finding a, a really good s s monitoring situation, I think, has been key to that. With, mm. I'm, I've been really happy with this ATC sub. I don't, I don't have it that loud, I, but just being able to hear what's down there. I mean, it's it's especially in for modern rock or pop on the radio. You, I mean, people want to want to be able to feel that yeah. sub down there. Absolutely. You got to be able to feel that, Absolutely. but. But if you get too much, it's you're, it's killing your stereo bus. It's mm -hmm. rumbling in the speakers. That, so I think really a great monitoring situation. I mean, it, it, using that and I, you know, I use some filters and multi-band compressors to be able to really still feel that low end, but not get just the rumbling mm. craziness that can happen. Pretty good, right? Is that what you do with your band? With your low end? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, you yeah. should because there, there's lessons here being imparted. <laughs> They're I'm incredible. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I know because of his speed. Yeah, oh, she's, she's still on his feet. Then. All right, so it, here's your chance to throw pitches. Oh, I like, I like throw this. pitches. I like this All right, part. Now he's got bat speed. We know that already. Yeah. So you ready for batter's box? I'm ready. 
All right, just because I'm I'm worried. Should I get out of the way? Because I have a feeling these things are going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm feel, I feel like no, I'm going to get embarrassed. No, I don't think so. I used to I'm trying to throw so. strikes. Today is bean ball. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get out of the way. Because yeah. your ball, well, give me a say something whoa, about your hand. Whoa, Let me whoa, just back whoa, up. Man. So let's do, let's do batter's box. <laughs> Why have we lost control today? Pitch away, because Mark's so good. Day, That's yeah. right. Here we go. Virtual amps. Guitar amps. Virtual guitar amps. The, 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 the tweed fender, maybe. The 55? Yeah, 55. Uh, bass. G uh, Gibson, uh, the, what was his bass? The, oh, the Gibson the EB1. Oh, okay. Uh, vocals. Sank and C41. Oh, wow, he's good, Herb. He's mm -hmm. real good. Yeah, he is. SPL. Transient designer, I guess. Mm. That's the right answer, by the way. Mm. 808s. Distressor. He's good, Herm. Reverb. 480L this week. Yeah. Mm. Delays. Uh, Echo Boy. L uh, limiters. Ooh. The manly guitars. Wow. Strat. Ah. If your studio caught fire, your lovely studio, after I saw it, if it caught fire, <laughs> what? After you go. <laughs> Anything <laughs> after that's okay. <laughs> that's that's what you're implying. Right? <laughs> what one piece of gear would you try to rescue? It can't be a computer, it can't be your lovely wife, your pets. What one piece of gear would you try to rescue? Well, my Strat or my piano, I don't think I can get the piano out the door. It weighs 800 <laughs> pounds, hyper, so the Strat, I guess. You know, it's it's Come on, man, yeah. you can multitask. You, know, yeah. you, you can do a bunch it's of stuff. It's hypothetical. I'll give you the piano. I lost. Yeah. But I tried, Herb. I know, oh, I, let the, was, I know I let the team down. No, you did, You just were up against a really good athlete. That's so, true. I mean, if you think about how much he can handle, you've got <laughs> eight mixes you going in one day. That. I can help with this I'm a piano and a guitar. Yeah, Well, that's what we would expect at this stage of the game. So... The future, just things that interest you, stimulate you. Is that kind of how you make your judgment on what you work on, where you go? Yeah, you know, I'm always just looking for some cool new project and exactly. mixing a lot of projects. I mean, I, I, I really love the, the environment we're in right now. I, so I get, I, I get so much stuff from around the world and yeah. interesting projects and, mm -hmm. you know, really cool independent stuff. It's yep. great, you know. Yeah. I'm having a great time with that. Um, I'm, I'm a cap. I'm a cap captain of my boat now. I got nice. have like a captain's license and stuff. Oh, very I cool. boat a lot. Oh, that's, that's, you know, that's kind of my we talked about fishing earlier. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, you guys could could yeah. definitely do that. Um, one is y your information um, for a whole big sector of our audience. Mm -hmm is so critical for them to hear because I think that it's about the evolution of taking what you've done in the past, doing it today in ways that in, involve technology but don't get in the way of the things that are in your heart and in your head. Like use technology as a tool. Right. Right? I mean, they're all just, yeah, it's all just different stuff in the toolbox. But, yeah, exactly. You know? And But the song counts and the other things that count and the yeah, things I mean, that touch people. I mean, to me, you're always working on the, on Hopefully, you're kind of working on the same thing, which is a song. You're working right. on the same car. If there's a diff, you know, there's right. some, there's newer tools. There's there's still a hammer you can still yeah. bash things with, but but there's some you know more modern tools to work on it as right. well. But the basics don't change. Yeah. Except in your case, you do ten of them at a time. That, that's the only <laughs> that's the only thing that's different. Uh, you know, you know, let's go back to that. That's got me flustered. Um, you're a little hurt. When about you're that working on when you because I work on a couple of songs sometimes at the same time with three Once assistants. Once in a while, three. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, one, but what? he works but as hard as three. Right, exactly. Uh, I was going to say. That's why yeah, but you're probably more methodical in doing, doing a really good job. I, don't, I wouldn't go that far. Um, <laughs> but I, I do understand. Yeah, do I do understand <laughs> the concept of, of, of distraction, which I think can be a, a creative tool if used correctly. And sometimes, have you, have you ever done this? Like you pull in the garage at night, and, and then you wake up the next morning, turn on the key, and the, and the radio is just like, ah, and you're like, wow, I don't like, remember leaving it that loud. Like every day. Well, that's what happens to us, right? <laughs> if, you, if you're listening to the same song too much, mm -hmm. it starts sounding right, and everything starts sounding good. So right. taking a break and, and working on another song, that probably 
I'm guessing kind of both kind of help in different ways to get a new perspective. I mean, and it, I can switch and, to a different artist, or yeah, I have an artist I was just doing 20 songs for, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes being able to cycle through a few at a time absolutely at least allows me to keep a little more consistency. I mean, sometimes you don't want consistency between the songs, but. Yeah. You know, at least it allows me to jump back and forth between four or five that I think are should be all in the right. same spot. But a lot of times, yeah, I just like to switch to a different artist for a minute and like, yeah, yeah change take, it up. You know, change it up. Uh, I'm, 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 as I was um, reading about you today, um, it just felt like you just truly enjoy helping young artists see their vision and, and taking a band and 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 help shaping them for a career. Um, you do that a lot. In fact, your website lists some of the ones you've done, so so that's important to you. And uh, I commend you for that. I think that's a really cool huh, thing because it takes a lot of effort, and you got to do twenty to have one. Well, you know, it's also pay for the other nineteen. It's, also, it's a lot of investment, a yeah. lot of time, a lot of money. And it's a lost art. Yeah, there there was an art before, and I'm not saying that there isn't a current version of it. But the current version of it is different than what we grew up on, yeah. and like it, things evolve, and so it's nice to see somebody who can take the past and the present and combine them and find their own thing. I mean, I really started just doing artist development because you know if I if I had slow periods, you know it's like I mean I'm like I can't just I sit around and wait yeah. for the phone to ring. I just try to make something. Yeah, make something. Is it possible for you to share something with us now that you're working on? I'm working. I, I have a, a band that just. Uh, that's on just came out this band called Mona that I've been working with mm -hmm. and Nick the lead singer for we've been working for about three four years on this project after he he was on the label I dropped we went back and helped to, you know really tried to re-envision how this thing could be successful right, and right. we have a it's one song that's just just came out last week and an EP coming out I think in the next few weeks mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited about that. I think I think I think we really landed on something cool. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have another. I have a new artist that I'm writing with with a, a woman named Andrea that we're just writing some songs now. That's it's a kind of it's a little Tina Turnerish. Mm, nice. Wow. Um, nice. So we're kind of heading that direction right now. It's not nothing ready to put out there yet. Sure, but I love that though. That's very. Cool. It's fun, you know. Very cool. So you made it through painlessly. Did you have a good time? I did we, have a good time. We've been, we've been wanting you for a minute. Glad was, somebody did. You guys, you, 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 you guys, you guys should come by the come by the place if you're over in Hollywood. Yeah, oh, let's do that. Let's, let's go. go. And by the way, just in for the Griffith record, Park, right? It's right. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll do that. Just for the record, um, I've been a big fan of his for a long, long time. Yeah. Studied his records. Mm -hmm. Stole some stuff from his records. Of course. I, well, you st I steal anybody. stuff from yours. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, you probably stole your own stuff. That's probably, but, uh, uh, you steal your stuff back. <laughs> Mark is someone that embodies everything right about our profession, from his charitable input to his skill to the way he works to his adoption of, of, of anything musical that can help our craft. Um, an all-star, a true all-star. That's why we call him a triple threat. Thanks for well, coming. Well, I, I really want to thank you guys for inviting me over. It was great. Uh, it, it's a pl This is yours. Come anytime. Have your lovely wife. Come, I will be back on. tomorrow. Then Come on, we'll be here. You guys got lunch. We'll be here. Yeah, we'll have lunch and we'll do another show. Uh, Dave, take us home. I was just just sitting here thinking. I might share with you on this particular day some of the places I went to learn about Mark. Um, Pure Mix is where I would start. He's got a, a, a couple of videos on there that are tutorials that are amazing. Discogs, I like them better because sometimes they break down things in more detail, all music. Um, when we have a guest on, we can't do do a, a, a five-hour dive on their entire life. So, so the way to utilize the show is go to some of these places. Go uh, type his name into Google and just follow threads. And one of the things I like to do is, is on Wikipedia is go to the footnotes and follow those and, and look at interviews. And I promise you, that you'll get a lot of information and inspiration that'll take you to the next level. See you next time. See you.